Uh, hey guys, this is the tutorial for the CO2 rocket builds. Um, I'm going to show you how to build it step by step. And I'm going to start with the nose cone. Um, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I have uh, a list of most of the dimensions off to my side so I can reference them as I go. So if you're wondering where I got some of the numbers from, just open the PDF of the CO2 guide and kind of try and follow that along. Um, but we're going to start with this part file. And this should open up uh, part shortly. I think I have too many tabs open on Google, so things are going to be kind of slow. Um, or incredibly slow. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into Sketch under, or the G Sketch under Sketch, and we're going to pick a plane. This is kind of just where you're allowed to draw. I typically, uh, I guess it depends on the geometry, the shape you're drawing, but for the nose cone in particular, we start with the front plane and you can kind of see why later on. Um, it's not critical, but it helps when you're doing assemblies and stuff. Um, so when I'm designing, I typically like to start with the center line first, and you can find that just right up here. Um, and that's just more or less a personal thing. I like to build a dimension to it. Uh, it's quick and easy. Uh, so first things first, I typically start with drawing the outline of your shape first. A lot of people go and start dimensioning right away. Uh, I don't really see the point in doing that. Uh, we're going to turn this to a construction line because I won't want this to be the real shape at the end. So you just do that by simply clicking on it and going to construction. Uh, next thing we want to do is get the height of the cone. So now we're going to start dimensioning things. Uh, just use start dimension for some start here to here. This is based on the PDF. And we can see that the cone height is uh, 1.5 inches. This is standard. This, can, this will vary based on like, your own rocket. Um, but this is just based on the PDF. You can change as you go. Um, next we have the shoulder link. I can get that by clicking here. And that is going to be 0.2 inches. Um, next we're going to start changing the inner diameters. So first, we're going to start with clicking oh, clicking this line and clicking the center line. So if we keep it over here, you're going to get half of your shape essentially. But if we move it past the center line, you're going to get the full diameter. Um, that's partly why I like using center lines. You can get diameter or radius simultaneously. And I typically like to go for diameters. Um, the diameters are relatively important because they fit the shape of your rocket, uh, which is pretty important for the uh, launch tube. So you kind of have to adhere to the rules of that. Um, so the ID I have chosen was, I think it was 0.7, I guess. And um, that'll give it some looseness too when we actually go to do it. Now we want to get the OD, so just click on the little dot in the corner, back to the center line. Oh, it's already selected for me. And you can see again, here's radius versus diameter. And we want this to be 0.8. This is the general shape. I think this is correct. Um, it looks like it. The next thing, I call this kind of cheating when we're making the uh, arc that goes to this. There's, there's formulas for it, but they're, I think they get a little complicated. I just typically just eyeball it. Especially since you're doing your own, it doesn't really matter. And it's like we're designing like super hardcore rockets here. Um, so again, I just pick the arc tool and go bottom point to top point, and you're able to control the middle. You can kind of do some general run. Um, I would recommend not having the arc go past the OD because it just doesn't make sense. You might not fit the tube anymore. Just place it anywhere. And what I'll do next is do another, just do a normal line and take it from the corner and just go straight up. And next, we're going to want to turn this into another construction line. And I'm going to make this line, just click on it and click on this one with control and make it tangent. And that's just how I know it's not exceeding the line. Uh, you don't have to do that, but I think it's useful for determining whether it actually passed the bounds or not. Uh, basically, we're almost done. Now I just need to close the sketch. I think SolidWorks actually closed the sketch for you uh, when we go to do this revolve. So we're going to go over to features here and click the revolve base base. Um, so it's going to give you this little prompt, blah, 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 blah. 
that's just talking about like a thin revolution that's kind of for making thin parts um, but we're going to be making solid parts so just click yes and it'll automatically close the line for us at the center line now we need to pick our axis of revolution just click on center and boom we have a simple nose cone and if you want to find that you don't like your design you want to go and edit it just click on the arrow sketch edit and you can start changing parameters such as your height for instance and now we have a longer nose cone and bam so that's the nose cone